Did you know Linda Ronstadt was the first female artist to achieve four consecutive platinums? Or that she's won 11 Grammys over the length of her illustrious career? In today's video, we're exploring the insane true story of Linda Ronstadt. Who is this sing-song artist? Let's begin. Linda Ronstadt's musical career began in the 1960s when she joined forces with the Stone Ponies, a folk rock trio from Los Angeles. They made a breakout hit song that showcased Ronstadt's distinctive voice and opened the doors for her to embark on a solo career in the early 1970s. Ronstadt quickly emerged as a force to be reckoned with in the music world. Her early solo albums demonstrated her ability to navigate various musical styles, from folk and country to rock. It wasn't long before she achieved widespread acclaim, earning a reputation as a versatile artist, unafraid to experiment with different genres. Linda Ronstadt's impact on the music industry is immeasurable. One of her most notable contributions lies in her ability to seamlessly transition between genres. This helped her break down musical barriers and appeal to a more diverse audience. Ronstadt is recognized for her vocal prowess as well. In fact, this aspect of her singing is often described as one of the greatest in the industry. Her ability to convey emotion through her singing is beautiful. That ability, coupled with her wide vocal range, set her apart from her other musicians of her time like Elton John and Pink Floyd. As a result, she became a role model for aspiring singers, one of which eventually became her own daughter. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. As we delve into the various facets of her journey, we see the humanity of such a historical icon as Linda Ronstadt. The Stony Ponies, Linda's folk rock trio, consisted of Ronstadt, Bobby Kimmel and Kenny Edwards. They began their journey in the burgeoning Los Angeles music scene. The Stony Ponies, with Ronstadt as the lead vocalist, released their debut album in 1967, featuring the hit single, Different Drum. This song, penned by a young and relatively unknown songwriter named Michael Nesmith, showcased Ronstadt's crystalline voice. The Stone Ponies' collaboration was a paramount period for Ronstadt, laying the groundwork for her soon-to-be admired career. While the group did not achieve sustained success, it provided a platform for Ronstadt to showcase her vocal prowess. It can be said that beyond the Stony Ponies, Linda Ronstadt's breakthrough in the folk rock scene may as well have been attributed to her ability to infuse authenticity into her performances. It helped that the late 1960s and early 1970s was a time period that witnessed a resurgence of interest in folk music, and Ronstadt's interpretation of this genre resonated with audiences. The Stony Ponies' hit song, Different Drum, became a chart-topping success, marking a pivotal moment in Ronstadt's early career. Her distinctive voice, combined with the folk rock sound that was gaining popularity, garnered attention and made Ronstadt a rising star. That era of folk rock exploration showed Linda that she could express herself through music, and this set the stage for her later ventures into various musical genres, showcasing her adaptability and willingness to evolve as an artist. The transition from the Stone Ponies to a solo career was a move that defined Linda Ronstadt's future. In 1968, she embarked on her solo journey, releasing her debut solo album, Hand Sewn, Homegrown. While the album did not achieve as much commercial success as she had hoped for, it showcased Ronstadt's potential as a solo artist. It was her second solo album that she released in 1960, Silk Purse, that started to gain attention because it featured a mix of country and rock influences. However, it was her collaboration with producer and future Eagles member Glenn Frey on her self-titled album in 1971 that truly propelled her into the mainstream. 
The album included the hit single, Long Long Time, which fans all over the world loved. These experiences were like the building blocks for Ronstadt's career. They showcased her ability to navigate diverse musical landscapes and showed her love for music and not just a particular musical genre. Crowds everywhere saw this as one of Linda Ronstadt's most remarkable attributes as an artist. She had the ability to be musically versatile. She defied genre constraints, fearlessly venturing into various musical landscapes and left her mark in rock, country and even mariachi music. In the rock genre, Ronstadt's powerful vocals and emotive performances became synonymous with hits like You're No Good and Heat Wave, both of which topped the charts. She collaborated with prominent rock musicians to further solidify her presence in this genre, and even within the rock industry, she tried out different sounds. In country music, Ronstadt's foray was equally impactful. Albums like Heart Like a Wheel, released in 1974, and Simple Dreams in 1977 showcased her ability to interpret and revitalize classic country songs. With her renditions of tracks like When Will I Be Loved and Blue Bayou, she not only achieved commercial success, but also earned respect within the country music community. Perhaps one of the most surprising turns in her career was her exploration of mariachi music. The album Canciones de Mi Padre, 1987, saw Ronstadt embracing her Mexican heritage and delivering a collection of traditional mariachi songs with authenticity and grace. This unexpected venture into mariachi further highlighted how willing she was to embrace diverse cultural influences in her music. Linda Ronstadt's exploration of diverse genres was not merely an artistic experiment, it translated into commercial success and critical acclaim. Throughout her career, she produced a string of chart-topping hits that resonated with audiences across different musical tastes. Her ability to infuse emotion into her performances, coupled with impeccable vocal delivery, made her a consistent presence on the charts. Albums like Heart Like a Wheel, Simple Dreams, and living in the USA were notably one of her most successful and they earned her a space in the hearts of many. Ronstadt's interpretation of classic songs and her collaboration with renowned musicians and songwriters showcased a level of artistry that transcended the typical constraints of popular music. Her accolades, including numerous Grammy Awards and other industry honors, underscored the widespread recognition of her talent and contributions to the music landscape. Ronstadt's impact was not confined to a single genre, making her a rare and celebrated figure with broad appeal. Linda Ronstadt's influence extends beyond her music. It reverberates through the work of subsequent generations of musicians. Her approach to genre exploration inspired artists to break free from traditional boundaries and embrace a more eclectic musical palette. The authenticity and emotional depth she brought to her performances set a standard for vocalists across genres. Ronstadt's ability to convey a profound connection to the music and lyrics served as a masterclass for aspiring singers influencing their approach to interpretation and expression. Her collaborations with a diverse array of musicians, ranging from the Eagles to Aaron Neville, showcased the power of cross-genre partnerships. This spirit of collaboration and openness to musical diversity has become a hallmark of contemporary music, with artists continuing to draw inspiration from Ronstadt's approach. However, Despite the glamour of Linda Ronstadt's musical success, her journey was not without its share of personal struggles. Ronstadt faced challenges both within and outside the realm of her career. One significant hurdle was the pressure of industry expectations and the constant demand for commercial success. The music business, especially during the peak of her career, was often unforgiving and demanding. For example, in 1969, Linda Ronstadt, then still the front woman for the Stone Ponies, flew from Los Angeles to Nashville for an appearance on the Johnny Cash Show. 
where she was booked a duet with the Johnny Cash, the man in black himself. Arriving a few days early, she checked into her hotel and spent most of the evening singing and having fun with some like-minded musicians, including Chris Christopherson and Mickey Newbury. Upon returning to her hotel room, she received a call from one of the show's producers who said he needed to come to her room to go over some notes with her. Ronstadt was initially suspicious, but still she reluctantly allowed him into her room. In her memoir, Simple Dreams, she records that as soon as he entered her room and closed the door, he removed every stitch of clothing he was wearing. The producer assumed that since she was from Los Angeles, she was a hippie, and that since she was a hippie, she believed in free love. When she threatened to call security, he told her no one would believe her because of the way she dressed. Fortunately, Ronstadt managed to escape to the lobby unharmed and unmolested, albeit incredibly shaken. But that is only one of several harrowing reminiscences in Simple Dreams, in which she paints the rock and roll world of the 1960s and 1970s as a nightmare for young women serious about their music, yet subject to the come-ons and hang-ups of some of their male counterparts. When the Stone Ponies toured with the Doors, Ronstadt was harassed by a drunken, belligerent Jim Morrison. Later, when she opened for Neil Young, she writes that his keyboard player spent weeks emotionally abusing her with persistent brutality. As a memoir, Simple Dreams stands out for its honesty, vulnerability, and Ronstadt's ability to capture the essence of moments that defined her life. Simple Dreams goes beyond a recounting of personal experiences. It serves as a cultural artifact, documenting the evolution of the music industry over several decades. Ronstadt's reflections on the societal and political context of her time point to the power of music as a force for social change. Published in 2013, the memoir delves into the intricacies of Ronstadt's personal and professional life, providing a nuanced perspective on the experiences that shaped her into one of the most influential voices in the history of popular music. Even the title, Simple Dreams, reflects not only the name of one of Ronstadt's best-selling albums, but also encapsulates the essence of her approach to life and music. The memoir is a candid narrative that unfolds in a lyrical and reflective manner, much like the songs that made her a beloved figure in the hearts of fans worldwide. While several stories like the ones mentioned earlier are narrated in the memoir, the story begins in Ronstadt's early years, recounting her upbringing in Arizona and the influence of her Mexican heritage on her musical sensibilities. It then follows her evolution as an artist, from her formative years with the Stone Ponies to the pinnacle of her career. Even the title, Simple Dreams, reflects not only the name of one of Ronstadt's best-selling albums, but also encapsulates the essence of her approach to life and music. The memoir is a candid narrative that unfolds in a lyrical and reflective manner, much like the songs that made her a beloved figure in the hearts of fans worldwide. While several stories like the ones mentioned earlier are narrated in the memoir, the story begins in Ronstadt's early years, recounting her upbringing in Arizona and the influence of her Mexican heritage on her musical sensibilities. It then follows her evolution as an artist, from her formative years with the Stone Ponies to the pinnacle of her career. Ronstadt shares behind-the-scenes anecdotes of the music industry, providing readers with a glimpse into the creative process, collaborations with fellow musicians, and the challenges of navigating a male-dominated field. Ronstadt may have been one of the most successful female artists of the post-hippie era, thanks to hits like You're No Good and Blue By You, but she thought the acclaim offered more artistic restrictions than opportunities. She recounts in her book how she never felt that rock and roll defined her. 
She writes that being considered for a period in the 70s, the Queen of Rock made her uneasy as her musical devotions often lay elsewhere. This points to one of the strengths of simple dreams. Ronstadt's ability to weave together the personal and the professional seamlessly was something very entertaining to read. She bears her soul in the book, discussing the complexities of relationships, the impact of fame on her life, and the sacrifices made in the pursuit of her musical passions. The memoir becomes a platform for self-discovery, and we're invited to witness the highs of chart-topping success and the lows of personal struggles. Ronstadt's storytelling is vivid and evocative, mirroring the emotive quality of her singing. Her descriptions of encounters with fellow musicians such as Neil Young, Jackson Brown and Emmylou Harris reveal the interconnectedness of the music world and the camaraderie that fueled her creative endeavors. The memoir also sheds light on Ronstadt's foray into different musical genres emphasizing her refusal to be confined by the boundaries of a single style. Her exploration of rock, country, folk, and even opera exemplifies her commitment to artistic authenticity and a genuine love for diverse musical expressions. Her refusal to be confined led Ronstadt to take the first step toward independence by playing Mabel in a 1980 production of Pirates of Penzance and she spent the remainder of that decade expanding her musical range dramatically. First with a pair of albums of American standards with the Nelson Riddle Orchestra, then two country albums with Dolly Parton and Emmylou Harris. She made a record with Aaron Neville and several albums of Mexican-American tunes passed down to her from her parents and grandparents. Ronstadt writes only briefly about her early career in order to focus much of the book on her later accomplishments. The formation of the Eagles, who were briefly her backing band, is allotted only three pages. Pirates, by contrast, takes up several chapters. This may prove unsatisfying for fans more interested in Heart Like a Wheel than in La Boheme, but it shows where Ronstadt's musical devotions lie. Her career was driven by her personal obsessions with the music she heard growing up, and by chasing those obsessions rather than bending to the will of the music industry. She grew into an ambitious artist with great range and interpretive ability. More than that, Ronstadt's commitment to authenticity and her refusal to conform to industry norms sometimes brought about personal and professional challenges. She faced criticism for her genre-hopping tendencies and the unconventional paths she chose, such as her venture into Spanish-language music with the Cancione de Mi Padre album. In addition to the external challenges, Ronstadt grappled with health issues. In 2013, she revealed her diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, a progressive neurological condition that affects movement. This marked a turning point in her life and career and showed the world a side of her that dealt with personal struggles. Despite these challenges, Linda Ronstadt's perseverance remained unwavering. Her ability to confront adversity with grace and resilience only deepened her impact, serving as an inspiration for others facing challenges in their own lives. Linda Ronstadt's career is studded with remarkable achievements and a plethora of awards pointing to her influence on the music industry. Her ability to navigate different genres, coupled with her vocal prowess, garnered widespread recognition. Notably, Ronstadt earned 11 Grammy Awards across various categories, including Best Pop Vocal Performance, Best Country Vocal Performance, and Best Mexican-American Performance. Her Grammy wins spanned different decades, illustrating how her love for music kept her through the ages. Several of her albums achieved multi-platinum status, including Heart Like a Wheel, and Simple Dreams, which her memoir was named after. In addition to Grammy Awards, she received accolades such as the Academy of Country Music Awards, American Music Awards, and induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
These honors not only celebrated her individual achievements, but also recognized her impact on the broader musical landscape. In 2013, Linda Ronstadt publicly revealed a significant and life-altering chapter of her journey, a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. These honors not only celebrated her individual achievements, but also recognized her impact on the broader musical landscape. In 2013, Linda Ronstadt publicly revealed a significant and life-altering chapter of her journey, a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. This neurodegenerative disorder affects movement and gradually progresses over time. Ronstadt's decision to share this deeply personal aspect of her life was a courageous move which was rewarded by support from fans everywhere. The revelation not only offered insight into the challenges she faced, but also sparked a broader conversation about the impact of Parkinson's on individuals and their lives. Ronstadt's openness about her diagnosis created awareness and empathy within the public sphere, breaking down stigmas associated with the disease. The diagnosis of Parkinson's disease brought significant changes to Linda Ronstadt's life and career. The physical symptoms of the disease, including tremors and difficulty with coordination, posed challenges to her ability to perform on stage. As a result, Ronstadt made the difficult decision to retire from singing in public, marking the end of a storied career that crowds had been glued to for several decades. The impact of Parkinson's disease extended beyond the stage. Ronstadt had to adapt to a new reality, facing the daily challenges that come with managing a chronic neurological condition. Her resilience in the face of these difficulties became an inspiration for others grappling with similar health issues. Despite the limitations imposed by Parkinson's, Ronstadt continued to engage with her passion for music in different ways. She explored her love for storytelling through her memoir, Simple Dreams, a musical memoir, providing fans with an intimate glimpse into her life and career. Linda Ronstadt's public disclosure of her Parkinson's diagnosis also led to her becoming an advocate for Parkinson's awareness. By sharing her journey and the impact of the disease on her life, she played a vital role in educating the public about Parkinson's and dispelling misconceptions. Her advocacy work extended to supporting organizations focused on Parkinson's research and patient care. Ronstadt's visibility as a well-known figure in the entertainment industry helped shine a spotlight on the importance of funding and research for neurodegenerative diseases. In interviews and public appearances, Ronstadt spoke about her experiences with Parkinson's, emphasizing the need for increased awareness, research, and support for those affected by the disease. Her contributions to Parkinson's awareness went past her role as a musician, showing her dedication to making a positive impact beyond the stage. Linda Ronstadt's battle with Parkinson's disease became a poignant chapter in her life, revealing not only her personal strength, but also her commitment to raising awareness and contributing to the well-being of others facing similar challenges. Her journey with Parkinson's pointed to the depth of her character and the impact she continues to have, not just as a musical icon, but as a beacon of hope for many deteriorating minds. Throughout her career, Linda demonstrated a strong sense of responsibility toward the world around her, using her fame to speak out on various social issues. One of the prominent causes Ronstadt championed was environmental conservation. She lent her voice and support to organizations focused on preserving natural habitats and raising awareness about the importance of sustainable living. Her activism reflected a genuine concern for the planet and a desire to inspire positive change. Ronstadt was an advocate for human rights. During a politically charged era, she used her visibility to speak out against social injustices and to promote equality and civil rights. 
her involvement in social issues went beyond mere lip service, and she actively engaged with organizations working towards positive societal transformation. Linda Ronstadt's impact as a social activist goes hand in hand with her role as a musician. Beyond entertaining audiences with her enchanting vocals, she sought to engage people in conversations about pressing social matters. Her willingness to use her celebrity status to draw attention to causes dear to her heart exemplifies the transformative power of artists as agents of change. In one instance, Linda was escorted from a Las Vegas casino after she had dedicated a song to Michael Moore. She called Moore a great American patriot and urged those in the audience to see his film. But Bill Timmons, the manager of the Aladdin Hotel Casino, did not like that very much. Timmons detailed the event to the press as a very ugly scene, claiming that Linda's action spoiled a wonderful evening for his guests and he had to do something about it. He banned her from playing at the casino after that. After her comments, dozens from an audience of up to 1,300 people left, with some reportedly tearing down posters. Ronstadt was 58 at the time and was not permitted to return to her suite, but was immediately removed from the building. She had made political comments earlier in the show, dedicating one song to Enron and attacking California's governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, for labeling his political opponents girly men. He banned her from playing at the casino after that. After her comments, dozens from an audience of up to 1,300 people left, with some reportedly tearing down posters. Ronstadt was 58 at the time and was not permitted to return to her suite, but was immediately removed from the building. She had made political comments earlier in the show, dedicating one song to Enron and attacking California's governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, for labeling his political opponents girly men. Michael Moore, whose film has become the first documentary to reach the number one box office spot in the US, immediately issued a statement in defense of the singer attacking the manager for throwing Linda Ronstadt off the premises because she dared to say a few words in support of him and his film. He called Timmons stupid and un-American. However, by lending her voice to such issues, Ronstadt was able to transcend the boundaries of her musical career and stand steadfastly by what she believed in. Her other works in advocacy served as an inspiration for fans and fellow musicians alike, encouraging them to use their influence to address societal challenges. Beyond this, Ronstadt's impact extended to her collaborations with other artists who shared her passion for social causes. Through benefit concerts, awareness campaigns, and joint efforts with like-minded individuals, she contributed to a collective voice for change within the music industry. Linda Ronstadt's advocacy for various social issues throws a little light on the potential of artists to influence positive change. Speaking out on issues like environmental conservation, human rights and social justice not only showed her personal convictions, but also left improved the legacy she left as a musician with a profound impact beyond the realm of music. Beyond her musical career, Linda was also an amazing mother. She raised two beautiful children, Carlos and Mary. Linda first went through the process of adoption when she was in her early 40s. Even though the she had never seriously considered marrying any of her ex-boyfriends, Jerry Brown, George Lucas or Albert Brooks, she always knew she wanted to become a mum one day because her former romances didn't work out the songstress chose to adopt. In December 1990, her wish of becoming a mom came true when she adopted a baby girl that she named Mary Clementine. Four years later, she completed her family when she adopted her son, Carlos, in 1994. Throughout the early years of motherhood, Linda juggled her role as a mom with her iconic singing career. After more than a decade of splitting her time between life at home in San Francisco and being on tour, she announced her retirement in 2011. 
Since then, Linda has continued to make appearances on TV and at events. Although Linda rarely ever opens up about her children, she gave us a glimpse into her life as a mom while speaking to an audience in 2013. At the time, Linda revealed how Carlos and Mary are involved with her music. Mary and Carlos are grown up now, but Linda has still kept a tight lip regarding details about her beloved children. Linda adopted her eldest daughter, Mary, in the early 90s. Mary used to work as an art assistant at the Guadalupe Art Program in San Francisco. She held the position for 10 years, from 2009 to 2019. Mary definitely got her love of art from her mum, Linda, who has been a patron of the non-profit organization Los Chenzantles Cultural Arts Academy. The company has been teaching traditional Mexican music and dance to children in San Francisco for nearly 30 years. The pair have always had a close relationship. Linda raised both of her children in Arizona. When it came to decorating their Mediterranean-style house, the Grammy winner let Mary and Carlos's imaginations run wild. In an October 2004 interview with Architectural Digest, she explained that Mary got a star-spangled ceiling while Carlos's room underwent a makeover to go with a cowboy motif. Though she still struggles with the life-threatening disease, Linda continues to impact lives. Her age-defying music still lives on in the hearts of fans worldwide. There you have it, folks. That's Linda Ronstadt. Did we miss anything in today's video? Let us know how well you know Linda in the comments. If you liked this video, you'll love the one showing on your screen right now. Click now and we'll see you in the next one.